you guys have watched the trailer or else that does not make my <laughs> Hello, welcome to the first episode of The Return Cart. My name is Chrissy. I have a whole panel of people here. I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Hi. <laughs> Did that help at all? No. <laughs> okay, um, my name is Martin Saavedra. I'm Christina's uh, boyfriend. I'm Tara Ross. I'm related to the former two. I'm Kryn. I am. Uh, I was just standing outside, and they asked me to come in, so here I am. Yeah, we're going to try to do that every week. We're just going to pull off a random person from the side <laughs> of the street. <laughs> Give them a hot meal, a cup of joe, you know. Nah, j- uh, coffee's expensive. <laughs> Especially for book readers. Wait, you told me there was no coffee. <laughs> You're making me drink hot water over here. What's going on? <coughs> I'm sure it's absolutely delicious tasting hot water. Well, I mean, you know, it's not bad. What do you have in this water? H2O. Mmm. <laughs> I should try more of this. It's a lovely flavor of H2O. <laughs> All right. So our first segment is actually going to be... Sorry. Our first segment is going to be about... Um, what cracks your spine? So what annoys you about certain books? And the one that I decided to talk about first was overuse of dialogue tags. Um, more importantly, he said, she said. Oh, my so. God. <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> that occurs so often in literary nature. She or... said. <laughs> well, so I, I think about times when I took writing classes and um, the instructors would say that you need to have dialogue tags on every piece of dialogue. Some of them, like not all of them. Well, I mean, I, I understand the use of them, of course. You know, you want to, you, you want to point to what character in a book is, uh, is saying what. And that, that, I understand how important that is. But when you have a character that's saying some long speech along like uh, the lines of two or three sentences, then they stop, they do something. And then you have, uh, the, the, the quotations afterwards of something being said. You assume that it's the person that was talking mentions something again otherwise it would you know, you'd expect to be pointed to well, you know john chimed in saying oh by the way I, I i think that you know it's crap that we don't have any coffee well you know? I, I well i i think i kind of i understand like where most authors are coming from right they're always worried about uh trying to like decipher that craziness of uh that confusion that kind of happens with uh with your character for the reader they're all trying to um to find that fine line of how much should they explain the character's background. Um, well, not the background. I'm sorry. Figure out what they should tag and what they shouldn't tag, right? At what point does the reader become too confused with whatever content you're kind of tossing out to them? I don't know. I mean, with epic fantasies, that stuff just – it it tends to get old quickly just because with the sheer volume that you read in a specific novel, especially once you, you know, cap over 500 pages or more, it, it becomes redundant. I, I understand that. I mean, trust me. So I'm a big audiobook listener, as you guys know. And I just read one recently or listened to one, uh, a book uh, recently. Yeah. And that thing drove me up the wall, Duvall said. <laughs> well and i oh my god yeah i remember that that was awful that was pretty bad <laughs> what's interesting is when i read red shirts i didn't notice it and i didn't didn't really pay attention to it until he told me that until he played a clip for <laughs> well, me ironically, on was, the audiobook it was crin who actually kind of pointed that out to me because if it wouldn't have been for crin like because i listen to so many audiobooks it just kind of a lot of even tonality. Just goes to the background. Yeah. It just completely flies to the back, and I'm just focusing on really what's being said and not how it's being said. So what you're telling me is this is all Kren's fault. It totally. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> In fact, yeah. he did a lot of things like like um like he he was the first one to, to mention breathing to me in songs, and so nowadays <laughs> when I listen to songs, you know, like like oh country home, take me home, or however that song goes, and so now I just notice all the little breaths inside Nickel of music back. because of him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that photograph. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> well, I, you know, when we were um, first learning how to record and you played back the audio that I did and I just hear that. <gasps> yeah. The, and that's still, you know, that's still a creative choice. Like whether or not I, you know, we're going to remove all of our breathing, which is going to happen. Well, you're going to hear all of our breathing. I just did it right there. But I mean, and I guess a lot of people who have podcasts will do that. They'll actually go through the entire podcast and remove all instances of breathing. And I found out that when I tried to do it, 
a lot of things just sound really unnatural. It kind of throws off the natural cadence of the speaker. It's really funky. But uh, that's that's probably the same thing audiobook uh, editors have to deal with too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and I don't know if this is specifically with uh, with the audiobook I was listening to. Um, a while ago, I was listening to um, uh, Margaret Ways and Tracy Hickman. Um, I believe it was called uh, Winter of Dragons, but I'm not quite uh, sure. I think I've heard of that. Yeah, and uh, and the the problem I had with it was that I'd be I, I'd be listening to it because it's great. You know, when you're listening to audiobooks, you can do you can listen to it while you work, which is which works out really well for me. Yep. And there would be times when when the characters would go through some kind of a, a, a enormous uh, um, task, and then at the end they're like, okay, now we have to go over here, and then there would be a break. <laughs> and the narrator would say, "So they went over to this town, and in the on in the process of going to this town, they ran into some thieves, and those thieves ended up knowing things that they needed to know. So they were able to interrogate them. It's like, why didn't you put that? Like, why did As you just scene? Yeah, why wasn't that a scene? Why would you sit there and just just sum up what happened in between <laughs> what's going on in this book? We you know this transition from point A to point B, and in between point A and point B, they also did this, and they also lost their money here because they, you know, one of these guys has a bad uh, bad gambling problem. You know that that kind of stuff really." bugs me <laughs> it's like i want to know more about that why won't you tell me more about that that's, yeah that's but sense. i mean have you ever read les miserables because you know that uh that one has the excess of the opposite problem i did not read that i did watch yeah. the movie though yeah no i love the no. movie <laughs> i have the book and it's been sitting on my shelves forever but okay i have the unabridged version and it's i have so long <laughs> i've read that book it literally and i i consider myself a pretty fast reader it took me about a month of straight reading to read that book through wow. just because I found myself at times being like, why do I care about a tree in a specific forest about a, a battle that took, you know, place 70 years ago? I mean, why is it relevant? Well, I actually heard an anecdote about that in reference to the princess bride. So if you ever read the princess bride, um, the, um, the author took the creative choice to like, and I don't know, maybe it's true, but, but it, it looked like he took the creative choice to, uh, kind of go down that same route except he summarized what was happening so he was acting like he was editing um a huge historical book when he was retelling it to his son yeah and what's funny is i didn't realize that that historical book was fiction so it was fiction yeah, okay. <laughs> it was fiction yeah. i i was uh uh researching to to make sure because i was like i want to read about you know all this huge world that he created and then to turn out. Yeah, I did the same thing, honestly, <laughs> after reading the book. I was like, I want to know more. And, I'm glad I'm not alone. <laughs> so, and it didn't. And I was a little sad for a while. Yeah. Oh. Same here. I was, I was looking up, I was like trying to look up the author that he had mentioned. Fictional. No, got very sad. <laughs> yeah, it was a long time ago. I don't even remember it. Like, I, I really don't fully remember the book. Oh, it, it was yeah, quite a bit hung for that, but no, it was, it, it, it's been a while since I've read it too. Cause, um, one of the few movies that I saw before reading the book, and what's funny is this is actually leading into our next topic of the day. <laughs> oh yeah. But, um, I Great do want to say that I, yeah. I was agree a good with transitional moment that you just it, completely blew. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Good transitional moment. <laughs> just blew it. <laughs> Um, but on, I mean, back over to dialogue tags real quick. Is there anything that you guys have, like, is there ever a specific type of dialogue switching that you don't agree with? Like, like versus saying said, do you like it when they say like, you know, whispered so-and-so or, you know, so-and-so. Oh, said yeah, I, d- I definitely enjoy a lot more detail when it comes to uh, pointing out how someone uh, speaks, right? The immersion is better. Exactly. Yeah. So, it, it definitely helps to immerse you in the, in, in, in the storyline of what's going on. Um, so would it just drive you crazy if they still did the whole, you know, oh, switching man. back and forth constantly oh. between the two? And it's kind of stop. It, it's you know, it's start and go. Uh, I mean, it's stop and go. Really, I mean, you start reading something, then it comes to an abrupt end where they're like, "They said this," and you're like, "Okay, well, now I'm not immersed anymore." Well, and that's that's actually a good point because I kind of catch uh, like the other day I was I just decided to pick up a random book, and I noticed that I just my brain skips over dialogue tags, right? So I don't even take that secondary part, like the said, into account when I'm physically reading the book. Oh, that 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 might be a a, a bit problematic later on, right? You know, you come to a segment and you think one person's talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, you usually can discern who, more or less who's talking based on context. But what if they did really say that? Then you're like, oh wow, uh, I just totally put that in this other person's mouth. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that can happen, I'm sure, but uh, more or less, it's just, um, I mean, a lot of 
dialogue reading, and I guess that's the line we're talking about from an author's perspective, but a lot of dialogue, you can kind of very easily, based on the context, relate it to a given character. Hopefully. Right. Yeah. Well, and then also that depends on the scene, because if you only have two characters yeah. and you're doing he said, she said, every line. Oh, man. That makes no and sense. Actually, to I, do. I agree with that one the most. But like if there's more than more than two characters, I could totally see that that I, you need to kind of break that down a little bit more. You need to say who's talking or, you know, in, at least in what order they're kind of going back and forth in their their exchange. But when there's two people, really? Like, really, do you have to do that every single time? Like, I think it's even worse when it's just, you know, the protagonist talking, in, you know, inside their head, and then they switch from an, an, a thought process to a word. And or even when they're giving a speech. <laughs> yeah, that's how yeah. I saw too. that. Um, I, oh, I, for, I wish I could recall the book that it was in, but this character was giving this long, long, like, I mean, like, 10-page speech. And... Every now and then, they'd punctuate with, he said. And I was like, we know who said it. Like, that's the point. He's giving us We yeah. interrupt this broadcast to bring you a special announcement. He, he said, said that. that. Yeah. And he continues to say it. <laughs> he continues to say it. Like, we just wanted to see if we were paying attention. Or like, he, he continued. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, continued. so uh, as, as, as far as... Uh, as far as this segment's concerned, how do you guys feel about uh, about the uh, books that either are strictly in one person's perspective versus books where they split the perspective amongst mul- uh, multiple characters? Oh, wow. I think as long as the author can keep it clear what perspective they're at now, um, so whether they do it by chapter title or whatever that case, I think, I think it works. I... Um I am so back and forth with that because on one hand, I love the idea to be able to like spread out the storyline between multiple different people. And some authors are really good at tying it back in together at the very end. Oh yeah. But on the same, same token, I feel like I'm being strung along. Right. So like we were talking about those old 1930s and 1940s serials that existed way back in the day. Mm -hmm. That's what it feels like, you know, on our next episode, blah, 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 blah happens to this guy or, and it's uh, it's kind of annoying because you get to a really good part with one character and then, they leave you kind of on a cliffhanger and then move to the next character. It's kind of and filler. sometimes it can be really frustrating, you know. Well, the, yeah. there's there's only one moment where I'm not sure I quite like it, and that's with audiobooks. Oddly enough, um, I'm listening to the girl on the train, and right now it's only two characters that they switched from. But even then, I got a little bit confused the first time they switched because they announced who it was they were switching to, <laughs> but the narrator kind of sounds a little bit the same for both. And like, there's there's some difference, but not a lot. Oh yeah, that's that's definitely. I mean, uh, you, f- to have a good audiobook, you have to have a you have to have a uh, uh, a narrator or a voice actor that can actually you know act the voices. Yeah, and they really <laughs> are uh, voice actors. I think that that kind of helps. Like, their voice kind of meld into the background yeah. as if they're really good at per- portraying that specific character. I mean, it goes down like butter. It's it's mm-hmm. fantastic. Um, but the other, I can't remember the book that I was actually. Uh, reading, but there was a past and and uh, there was like a future, past and present inside of the character's uh, storyline, and that got really confusing really fast. Oh, I believe it. Yeah, you know, and so you'd always have to like kind of sit there and be like, okay, well, what are we? Wait, did, you had to did, wait like fill in clues to figure out more well, or less what time frame. Wasn't that also it by Stephen King? It did that too. It, yeah, but that wasn't so confusing. It, He's it, pretty pretty good yeah. about that. Did the did the guy reading it? Uh, change the way he spoke in each, like, uh, even though it's the same character because it's younger, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you okay. had to do that in it. But I'm like reading the stand, and the stand does the same thing where it jumps between multiple different perspectives. I I, I mean, I haven't had a problem at all um, jumping back and forth between the characters. All right. But it does have that continuation problem, like that serialization problem that I was talking about. Yeah. Ironically, that's fresh in my mind because I was just <laughs> listening to the book, you know, on our way here. I don't know. Ari, Ari Salvatore does it really well with uh, the Dred Stewart and series. I mean, yeah. in the book, he switches between characters within the same scene, and he does it so seamlessly that you you just kind of feel like you're almost watching the story unfold instead of really reading the story. Yeah, R. R. A. Salvatore's work is definitely where uh, where the, that's the first time I was introduced to that to that kind of concept. Uh, before then, I'd always read books that were in like a single person's perspective, and then you know, as I'm reading through just a word and uh, the. Uh, what was it called? Ten Thousand Orcs, 
I uh, Ten Thousands of Orcs does it really well. He goes to um, another character. I have no idea what's going on. Like, wait a second, this is a crystal drisk? shard. Does it well? <laughs> I think um, the first book that I can remember that did that did it in one book because I remember the Animorphs series. Each book was in a different character's perspective. Like it would kind of round robin. Oh yeah, yeah, and I love books like that. Too. And I love books like that as well. Um, but I think the one that switched perspective uh, each chapter was Game of Thrones, the Game of Thrones series by George R. R. Martin. Oh yeah, but that one does it well too. Yeah, but with him, since he. Since he decided to write in third person, it was easier because that person's name popped up. The only time it ever bothers me is when there's an author who does not change their writing style and they're writing in the first person's pr- perspective. So if they have multiple characters, but they write the same way for all the characters, <laughs> that drives me nuts. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Like, it's first person. Yeah, Everyone yeah. has thoughts that are different. Not everyone thinks the same way. Yeah, I know what you mean. An author that does the first person perspective well while switching to characters, I think, is Frank Herbert. Uh, Frank Herbert does it really well with the Dune series. Yeah, he Um, he does, yeah. And he really does it eloquently enough where he, he portrays that character differently from his other characters, and he also goes about describing the scene very well. But a lot of authors have a little bit of difficulty with that. At least some of them do. I've read some some novels where it just did not come off very well at all, where you're just like, this is kind of gritty. Gritty yeah. at best. Yeah. Well, I think that kind of fits with the theming, right? Because if you think back, again, kind of going back to that whole serial thought process, you have those old, like, uh, you know, pulp, was it pulp magazines or pulp um uh, pulp comics. I want to say pulp fiction. <laughs> no, that <laughs> one of the best movies ever made. No, but, but. but I mean, that's really dark and gringy, and you really think of like the main guy as uh, usually some type of detective. Mm-hmm. They were always expressed in first person, right? And, in fact, um, the Watchman does it with. Um, Are you thinking of uh, like noir? Yeah, like noir. Yeah. Well, that's kind of where that came from. Was a serialization. Yeah. Of uh, either like short segments. I can't even remember any of the the actual serials, but yeah, that that happened. Um, quite a bit where you know there'd be kind of like that first person uh narrative uh behind that character but that actually does kind of bring up the next uh segment which because we talked about uh uh frank herbert's dune and then we talked about uh um what's that other guy's name oh my goodness <laughs> george R. R. martin yeah George. and R. R. we talked Thrones. about uh ari salvatore ari salvatore well i don't know was did did, did they ever come up with a movie or Episode for Aya Savatel or anything like that? Yeah. They um, have a graphic novel series, but not an animated or a, a live action movie. Oh, okay. So Yeah, this this plays into our next segment because we talked about a few movies that have been turned into our few books that have been turned into movies and we actually talked about um The Princess Bride was the other one. Yeah, the Princess yep. Bride. So this next segment is called The Book Was Better. Oh, and isn't that always true? It's always I true. I mean, even when the movie's really I, good. I, I don't know many <laughs> books better. that the movie is better. Okay, actually, I will say one. Narnia. The Chronicles of Narnia. The The movies are actually a little better than the books just because they give you more intimate details than the books actually do because the books were written for children. What about those made-for um, movie books? Like, um, like Star Trek did it? In fact, I think you just read. Oh, the, the tie-in? I actually didn't even finish it because I was buying it from the library and I didn't finish it on time. Oh, not Star Trek. I'm sorry. You were it reading the Star, Star Wars, Wars one. Yeah. yeah. The Last Jedi I was reading. Yeah. So so what did you think of the Last Jedi movie versus the, you know, made for... Uh, oh, the, the book tie-in? Yeah. The yeah. So tie-in. when when a book comes out after a movie or a TV show, it's generally called a tie-in. Uh, and it, it was okay. I was h- kind of hoping for more details on... Uh, either certain things or backgrounds and they gave it a little bit but for the most part they just played out the scenes in the movie which is okay but but it was was okay like it wasn't bad it was interesting enough i don't read a lot of movie tie-ins or book tie-ins to movies i've done a lot with the star wars universe but that's very limited well i think they did one i think almost every last star wars movie had one and um, I might get corrected about that, but I, I'm pretty sure I've seen 
I could have sworn I've seen one for one, two, and three. I kind of feel that way about the uh, Diablo books and um, the Halo series because, you know, the media version of those came out far before the novels. And yeah, they, I, they did a good job with them. Oh, well, I'm a Halo whore. I, I used to be back in the day <laughs> during like one and two. Aren't we all? And so, I mean, I picked up the book, uh, The Flood, I think is what the book was called. It was great. Yeah. You know, I mean, I didn't have a problem with it. As a standalone book, it would have been perfectly fine. I was thinking about getting into the Magic the Gathering books uh, back when we played Magic oh, the Gathering. Didn't you, oh, yeah, yeah. Didn't you yeah, read any of them? I oh, yeah. One you did. Yeah, I read the uh, Ravnica City of Guilds, That's right, Ravnica yeah. uh, Guild Pact, and uh, Dissension. Those Very are pretty good, good books. too. Yeah. Very good Those books. Yeah. Good. yeah, and the reason why I wanted to read them was because on each Magic the Gathering card, it, ha- it would have the little quote from the books. And I was like, oh, like flavor that text? Yeah, yeah, the flavor so text. Good. Yeah, and a lot of the times they use the flavor text, I think, from the card in the book in some yeah. way. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I want but mainly I like to um, read books and then go see the movie or the show that it's about Um, and I think recently they've actually came out with quite a few that's based off of books Uh, currently like I saw on Netflix there's a a movie called To All the Boys I Loved Before which is based on a young adult novel and then they're coming out with I think quite a few uh, movies as well. And then I think they put a TV show after Gillian Flynn's Sharp Objects. And that's the same writer who did Gone Girl. Hmm. Which Gone Girl is one of the few movies who actually lives up to the book, I think. I, I really liked how they ad- uh, adapted it to the film. So uh, have, have any of you guys read uh, 2001 Space Odyssey or seen the movie? I have seen the movie and, and read the book, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, what's really interesting uh, uh, about 2001 A Space Odyssey is the fact that the book and the movie were made at the same time. <laughs> really? Yeah, the what's book that? was being written that. while the movie was being filmed. It was uh, actually pretty interesting. So uh, I always thought that was uh, – a and, and, and as far as that's concerned, the movie, I like the movie over the book. Um, the book was kind of weird. The book was kind of – the movie was also weird. Um, but it was, it was, it was even more out there than the, than the movie. Though. Yeah. The, the book was even more out there, especially towards the end than the movie. But, uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's another one that I like to think of, uh, as far as, uh, uh, whether, you know, like, was the book better in that case? I don't, I don't think so. Um, I'm sure that, uh, that it's very far and few between usually the, the, the books are better because there's more details in there. You can only fit so much in a two hour time span for a movie. Um, and you know some movie adaptions, uh, well, adaptions aren't too bad. Like um, it, I mean, uh, Stephen King's It that just came out recently. That movie was great. You know, yeah, but that, yeah, yeah. that mainly followed the <clears throat> basis of the book. I mean, when you look back to uh, the nineteen ninety uh, miniseries, um, you had an it that was more ha ha funny than scary funny, which is the way that Pennywise is really described of in this newer book. And I, I mean, not movie? the newer book, the newer movie on yeah. um, in the book. That's, you know, he was not um, he wasn't exactly a joyous killer. He was more of a scary, terrifying salting of the meat was the way that he put it. That's why he scared his victims. So, I mean, yeah. yeah and I think um, they did a really good job with the characters. Like, I, I, have you watched it? I mean, have we all kind of seen that one? I have not read the book. Yeah, I've, I have. But I do love the movie. Yeah. But you watched the new movie? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. See, yeah, it was re- great. I've read the book. I've not seen the new movie. But. Oh, the yeah. If you if oh, you get a chance, you really and I, fi- I think it's on Netflix right now. Yeah, it is. is I'm gonna go ahead and give Netflix a plug, providing us great <laughs> movies. Since I no, but um, there's there's a free sponsor right there. Yeah, there's a free sponsor right there. Yeah, so Netflix, if you're hearing this, give me money. So <laughs> or free subscription, I don't care. Here's actually a novel series. Um, that was turned into a TV show. And I was very horribly disappointed with it. And it's not uh, the Game of Thrones. It's actually uh, Sword of Truth. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, I haven't read it. Or haven't and it. I, okay, like these books typically average 800 to, you know, uh, over a thousand pages, every single novel. The first novel could have easily covered a, a season in itself with just the details provided within that, that novel. And unfortunately, I tuned in to watch the very first episode, got 20 minutes into it, and they had completely destroyed the entire premise of the book. Are, are you talking about like the, the Wheel of Time series or? No, no, no. This is uh, the Sword of Truth. Sword uh, of the Truth. Wizard's First Rule, I think, is the first book. I've actually read the first three uh, novels in the Wheel of Time series. Um, 
the only words I can use to describe it is slow burn. Slow burn. I mean, great story. A lot of wonderful immersion there. But much like... Um, uh, I'm I'm, I'm going to get a lot of hate for this, but uh, the Lord of the Rings series, if you've actually ever sat down oh, and no. ever read it. No, I agree with you. It's a very slow burn. Great, hugely immersive and informative, but slow, slow burn. Yeah. I mean, you sometimes have to force yourself just to turn that next page to be like, I want, I, okay, all right, I'll well, do it. I'll spoiler do it for alert, the sake I'm, of the story. I'm not a fantasy guy. So, <laughs> oh, I, I actually, I actually really liked uh, the the Lord of the Rings series. Um, actually, I remember uh, in, in grade school reading uh, reading the Hobbit, and I, I, it, it, it didn't seem to be uh, at least for me, it wasn't really a slow burn. But I can I, I can understand where there's there's certain points where they're trying to build the atmosphere that might because you're well, in grade well, school, you got to sleep half the time you're reading it. Like the teacher was actually reading it to the class. So oh, it was what like a, whatever for nap time, whatever. Well, the Hobbit was a lot shorter than the Lord <laughs> than yes. any three of the Lord of the Rings books. Or other yeah, well, works of that same author. Yeah, like some uh, some. Yeah, I can, never, <laughs> I can never. I can never pronounce it. We need Stephen Colbert right now because that is yeah. his favorite novel, literally. <laughs> um, but yeah, that that is another one of those novels where you're like, I really want to do this for the sake of the story, but uh, yeah. you you know, I can admittedly that's one of my did not finish books. Was uh, book two was the I think the Twin Towers is the <clears> second <throat> book. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the two towers. Yeah, the two towers. I, I couldn't, I couldn't finish it. Or yeah, the two towers, the twin towers, nine eleven, <laughs> the twin towers. Went never down forget, the, never forget, never forget the Hobbit. No, I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> never forget My the one. Precious. Yes. Uh, no, yeah, no, I, precious. I could not. I, I got a little over halfway. I remember reading the scene where Legolas and Gimli were. Having a contest of how many or who could kill the most orcs. Really, that's a that's like one of the best and, scenes. No, I I read through that. I love that scene, but then it got into the slow burn again, and I forgot what scene came after that. But I just remember reading it. And I was like, I cannot, I can't take him describing the leaves. So on the trees, actually, then I have to say in this instance that I think it was probably. A good adaption um, to movies because in the movies you have to cut out a lot of different content. We talked about that. Yep. So you know you take a a uh, thousand page novel and you got to chop that sucker down into a few hours. And I'm not saying that the Lord of the Rings was short uh, for a movie by any means, but at the same time, I mean, for me, I never I, I never read like the second or third book and I never read The Hobbit. And so for me, it seems like they did a great job with the rest of the story. Um, and uh, on. The, the silver screen, you know, I think it, it came out fine. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 would I have thought it was pretty good. Yeah, I mean, The Lord of the Weekends did a good thing. I would say that the Hobbit novel and the Hobbit movie are, they're on par with each other. Well, I, uh, oddly enough, the, the Hobbit, Hobbit movies, movies were a little bit much for me because they split that tiny book into three separate parts. I know. And I get, I think they were trying to explain kind of the background information uh, to to get clarity, but it it's it went on for far too well, long. Last no, they're, they're trying to explain why profits. We can really digress here because if you guys like ever remember watching the original Hobbit cartoon, I love those. Yeah. I mean, and and I've never watched them. Okay, and oh the Lord gosh. of the Rings, two of the the Lord of the Ring the cartoons are actually really good. The middle one is kind of iffy because the animation differs. But yeah, I mean uh, you, you go back to the cartoon and again, it was it was campy but nice. But again, it did justice to the book. Well, I, I, I like the Hobbit movie, uh, well, movies. Um, it's just is uh, it was not exactly uh, accurate to the book, I guess. There's they, they added a character in there that I, that I was like, I don't remember reading about this guy at all. It was the orc with the messed up arm. I don't remember him in there at all. <laughs> yeah, now that I'm thinking back to it, I can't. Yeah, like, no. I can't and, remember and, and, that. And they added no, that segment where, uh, where where Gandalf goes off and he does his own thing. Yeah. I don't, I don't yeah, remember that, that in the book at all no. as well. Um, it was, uh, I believe the book was all in, in uh, Bilbo's perspective, right? It, it was. Um, yeah. So, uh, I, I mean, I love the movie though. The movie was great. Even adding those characters, even taking those, uh, I think that, uh, that they might call them like artistic liberties, right? Oh, mm-hmm. we're going to add these characters in. We're going to try to make this book, uh, this franchise as big as possible because this is the last time we're going to get to do it. 
Um, squeeze out every last drop. Oh yeah, squeeze out every last drop, and that was enough. Ah, uh, so <laughs> that reminds me about you know. The, the, I kind of wish I would have mentioned this in the last segment. I feel so sad. The uh, the 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 part where uh, uh, that one guy I can't remember his name. Forgive me for that, but um. The uh, the character that actually shoots down the dragon, right? Oh, the bard? Yeah, mm. the bard. You never get to see that guy's perspective, which is great that they elaborated that in, uh, on that in the movie, because in the book, <clears throat> you just hear about it later on. Yeah, Smog went off, flew off to go take out this guy, and then he he, he was taken out by, by some... some uh, Random fisherman dude who you happen to have, you know, this this amazing, you know, spike thing. And uh, th- I thought that was interesting that they never they, they because they were doing this strictly from Bilbo's perspective, all these other amazing things that were happening at the same time. You didn't get to see. Well, and I can I can totally see the merits behind kind of expanding on that. But at the same time, like one of the biggest problems that I have with with movie adaptions um, is uh, it's a money grab. Right. So like. Like, okay, so The Hobbit, for instance, got turned into how many movies? Wasn't it three? Three. Yeah. Three yeah. movies. They milked that sucker for three movies. Yeah. And I don't know exactly how many pages were in the original Hobbit, but my goodness gracious. It, right? was, it was like half of a Lord of the Rings novel. So It was like 400. And they had a pretty good track record. Um, just like with Harry Potter, the last uh, the last uh, movie that they had. Uh, um, the Deathly Hallows? Was it, I, I stopped reading after three. but uh, <gasps> Yeah, the Deathly Hallows was one singular novel. And then they have it as a part one, part two? Yeah. yeah. Was yeah. the Deathly Novels long enough uh, as far as like in comparison to the fifth book to warrant two, two movies? I no. stopped at the Phoenix Order. No. Not really. Okay. I mean, you're, you're looking at like an 800 page book, hardback, I believe, um, seven, 800 pages, something like that. But it, they really did kind of like stretch it out. 607 pages. Okay. So I was, I was drastically off there. I, yeah, I, that's I, pretty impressive. I, I, I puffed that a, book up bigger than what it was. Yeah. Was, and I think there was a lot in the Harry Potter, um, books, but for, for some reason they actually didn't really expand on quite a bit of what was in the books and instead, uh, elaborated on scenes that I don't know if they really need to elaborate on. Yeah. Can we have a moment of silence for Peeves? I know, <laughs> right? That is like right? the most <laughs> un, a moment of silence for Peeves and a moment of silence for did you put your name in the goblet? <laughs> yes. <laughs> he said that calmly. <laughs> yeah, that was um yeah. I don't and I'm not going to I'm not going to say that the Harry Potter movies were bad. They they weren't bad by any means. In fact, I loved them. I mean, mm-hmm. they were great. Um but I think after a while uh they're really just trying to milk uh really just milk the book for everything it's worth oh, and then yeah. even in some instances add to it yeah. which i think is great like if it, it can be great but at the same time it can it, it can really throw people off when they see something that they're not expecting in the movies and i understand that's kind of the point you know you, they they read the book yeah. they have an idea of what's going to happen they you got to throw throw a few uh uh wrenches into the mixture to see if you know if, if you can you know get that wow factor like oh man that was amazing i never thought of that you know and well so- and i think i'm probably just naive but i actually do love that it's like a little morsel for the book readers like oh by the way you know this isn't just a repeat and we're not, we're not just chopping the story down here's a little something extra and it might have it definitely didn't originate from the the actual author who wrote the book but still, it's nice to see it there, you know? I think it kind of takes away in the Harry Potter series. Because, I mean, the entire reason why we love Harry Potter, right? It's not just that it's a fantasy book. It is literally a mystery book disguised as a fantasy book. It is the entire purpose of the of, of every single Harry Potter novel is that you start off the school year and you have a mystery to solve. You know, like with the Chamber of Secrets. Or with uh, who's going to try and steal the philosopher, uh, Philosopher's Stone. The Prisoner of Azkaban. The Falafel Stone. The Falafel Stone. <laughs> the Falafel Stone. <laughs> um, the Prisoner of Azkaban. Uh, the, the Deathly Hollows. What are the Deathly Hollows? Uh, I still don't know. <laughs> the, the, the That's podcast, a whole different yeah. other podcast. That's going <laughs> to take about five hours. Long. It's, it's not long enough death. for that. Let's let's hope that the you know the listener count doesn't go up too high, or else I'm going to get stoned to death. Like <laughs> well, hopefully, away. they give you a ten minute head start. Yeah, <laughs> they're going to burn you at the stake. Like, yeah, I don't. I like, I like Harry Potter. You are, yeah. Don't. Well, what's interesting is that sorry, with the splitting of the last and the series to two movies are um, doing like extra for. 
whether it's viewer count or what have you, uh, they did that with the Twilight series. Now, admittedly, I didn't have not read the Twilight series. I read, um, I. like the first three chapters of Twilight. I um, can't do sparkling vampires, glitter vampires. I, I just, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. It, it just yeah. wasn't, it just wasn't in my, uh, I did the Black my Dagger style that instead. Liked. You know, there the you adult go. version I'm of... I'm a monster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a monster. Glitter, 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 glitter. <laughs> oh, um, look, the sun's on me. But that does... Sparkle. That actually does make me think the sparkliness, the sparkly vampire makes you think of The Martian with Mark Watney. That, oh, was, that was great. <laughs> what kind of segue? <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah. It was an absolute bullcrap segue. But no, The Martian was fantastic. I mean, I love that book. That book just touched me deep in weird, funny places. Oh, yeah, The Martian was great. It was Martian fantastic. Was and, the, and the movie was great. I know you didn't watch it. Um, uh, Her- oh, no, I watched it. You did? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah How did you like the movie? Wait, did you? I, I could have sworn you. Okay, because you're one or the other, right? Like, if you read the book first, you don't watch the movie. And if you watch the movie, you don't read the book? Um, yes. If I read the book, I don't watch the movie generally. However, at the university, they decided to have this special screening, and you got extra credit to go watch it. So I was there. That's interesting. What would you, th- yeah. you think? You thought it was pretty good? I thought, you know, and it's actually kind of funny, because I, I came out of the uh, out of it after reading the book, came out of the movie, thought the movie's okay, uh, uh, but there's, you know, there's some things that I didn't like about it, you know, there, there were some inaccuracies I didn't like, there's one line I wanted to hear that I didn't the hear. The Aquaman line? Oh, yeah. Oh, everyone yeah. wants yeah. to hear the Aquaman yeah, one. The everyone Aquaman was one. waiting for it, and oh. I think at the end, everyone's like, oh. where was it? Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh. And it's actually funny. I was, <laughs> it's it's actually pretty funny because I was literally like 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 getting get, getting a refill of popcorn on the way out. One of the other students is there, you know, getting popcorn. And I'm like, don't you think the book was better than the movie? And he looks at me and he's like, I've heard that so many times. Everyone says the book's better than the movie. And he walks off. He's like, you're not original. I was like, I'm not here to be original for you. <laughs> <laughs> this this isn't a comedy show. Yeah. <laughs> this is just my like, This is old material. He walks off with his popcorn. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> he's like, I, I didn't pay to hear this <laughs> copyrighted material yeah. about the book being better. <laughs> Oh my god, that's funny. Open mic night at the Apollo and you get yeah. booed. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, the thing of it is is that uh, I loved the movie. Like, honestly, I, I watched the movie before I read the book. I love the more immersive character development because you really, I mean, you only get to see bits and pieces. Like, his full character and personality does not really get shown through the movie as much as it does through the book, yeah. obviously. And I, I actually think, you know, um, I think the actor did a great job. Yeah. Yeah, Matt Damon, right? Matt Damon. Yeah, yeah, Matt Damon did a good job. It was probably one of the best films I think he's ever been in, honestly. Well, thank you for catching me on the rebound. I couldn't remember his name. I'm terrible with, with <laughs> actors' names. But, yeah, no, I think it was great. I think it was... Uh, um, I mean, it's it was better than what I expected it to be. Right? Yeah. I, was, I was honestly expecting the debauchery of the of the book, but no, I mean it. It was great. No, I mean, I even, laughed just as hard as you know in the movie as I was when I was reading the book. Yeah, and the changes that they made to the movie made sense yeah. for it to be uh, in the movie uh, because in in the book he types up all of his yeah entry logs, but that wouldn't really make for an interesting movie. So they, instead, they did the video logs. Yeah, I could. Yeah, I could that see was that definitely kind of boring. definitely a positive change. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I'm just imagining some guy like typing furiously, well, and that's I mean, all you, know, you hear from. The they could have they could have showed him, you know, uh, uh, shown him, you know, typing or writing or something like that to to, to record his logs, and as he's doing that, yeah, you, you hear his voice narrating mm. what he's saying. The visual thought bubble. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think that's probably what gets lost the most in translation, though, is like the the character's feelings and emotions in response to whatever. Is occurring. Oh yeah. So here's um, a question: Has anyone actually read just small tangent for a second? But Willy Wonka. I mean, you know, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I've read it. That's on the list. That is on the list. I've I've read it and watched That's both it. movies. Yeah. So I mean, when you really go back and you read that novel, it is very dark. So like the original, um, you know, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory is all about you know Charlie's experience and Willy Wonka being this above and beyond huge character and he was this joyous person you didn't really get to see the dark side of willy wonka in the original movie but in the second movie you really really see that you really see that he's a flawed and damaged character and that comes off drastically in the novel down to the oompa loompas like the songs that they sing in in the first and even in the the second movie they're not nearly as derogatory as they are in the book yeah admittedly i was um 
trying to sing the Oompa Loompa songs from the book to the tune of the movie did not work. No. Didn't no. didn't work out. Didn't work out. It lacks that kind of, you know, musical magic. Yeah. But yeah. No, I mean they're they're rude little little guys in the <laughs> in the novel. To oh, say yeah. the to say that, I mean that's nice of me to say mm-hmm. that. Uh cuz I could get far more graphic with how they are, but yeah. And and uh, that brings up another topic. Is this PG? Like do we have to watch what we say like I don't think so. So I can say like I'm like never mind, but <laughs> well, yeah, here, here, we can't send an editor. They're it mean. depends oh, on right. what it is. They're mean little bastards. There you They're go, mean little bastards. Yeah, mean little bastards. <laughs> um, well, in fact, there was another one that I actually thought did pretty good. That was, uh, oh gosh, I can never remember. Mockingjay. Uh, oh, to kill the, the, the Hunger Bird. Games. Oh, no, the Hunger Games. The there Hunger Games. Yeah. yeah, I always forget the name of that book for some reason. Well, the three books, but uh, I mean, I think that that came out fine. Too. When, I mean, when they yeah. took it down to the uh, the cutting room floor, and I will not read the book. I won't what? do it. Um, the book was pretty. Because I seen the movie. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's <laughs> there it is. Odd. There it is. That's what I was talking. About. That's See, I would odd. much rather watch the movie first and then read the book because I feel like I'm getting bonus material. Right? You feel like rewarded. Well, for my the my book worry, at that point. and ironically, this probably has to come up during like an audiobook talk, like an audiobook segment. Both uh, me and Corinne are pretty big audio bu- book buffs, but uh, you know there was an argument that was made to me. Actually, from another co uh, co host that's going to be on the show eventually, and she said that you kind of lose a little bit in the in the imaginative aspect behind listening to a book. I mean, behind uh, reading the book directly versus listening to the book, and and that actually comes down to like the person's voice, right? So like inflections and the voice of the character gets lost because you're hearing somebody else say it. It's not your own imagination um, imagination kind of painting this character part of that character has been offloaded to somebody else. And in that instance where we watch the movie, like I have a terrible time when I read a book and then I watch the movie that all my memories from the book get supplanted by the characters from the movie. And I can't help it. Like all the voices, all the <laughs> scenes, yeah, all the characters get completely um, supplanted uh, towards the book. I really don't have that happening. And maybe it's just that you know I spend so much time with my nose in between a, in between a a novel that I just don't lose that magic. That makes sense. See, for me, I I like to read the books before I see the movies, mainly because I like to see uh, how someone else interpreted that scene. Um, and I like having that background information. So when I, for example, when I read Gone Girl, I was, I'm glad I read the book for it because I was very surprised by kind of the turn. Yeah, but, but, but isn't that, that also s- kind of sad though? You, you go to see the movie and you already, you, you already kind of know what's going to happen. No, I like that. Personally, I like that. I actually am not so, a big fan of like you're not, you, pop surprises. Okay. Um, I, when I was watching the movie, I was like, I can't wait for it to turn. He doesn't know. And I know. Oh, man. <laughs> see, so, I would, I would feel that way if movies generally followed the book more yeah. accurately mm-hmm. i'd be like oh this is horrible but usually they throw something in there as a curveball anyway and yeah. i'm like wow look this is completely different than what i thought it was going to be so it's a different experience well ha- it, it is a little bit but i've been noticing um movies and tv shows actually following the books more closely recently so like we come up with the martian um yeah uh gone girl i think the only one i think Really deviated, but I, I I believe it was because of Fantastic just, Four. Fantastic Four. Yeah, it didn't it didn't follow the book at all. <laughs> uh, but more of Are Ready Player like- One. Oh, Ready Player One. Yeah, there's Ready Player one. one didn't really follow the book mainly because now that I look back at the book, I'm like, ah, it just wouldn't really make sense for for them to follow the book because a lot of it's him standing at an arcade game <clears> and <throat> playing an arcade game. <laughs> well, and that's another interesting point because. I, I was thinking to myself, like, oh, you know what? I didn't like Ready Player One as a movie as nearly as much as I liked the book because, you know, all they're really trying to do is just basically jerk me off with all this cool references, <laughs> right? And then I realized that the book is doing the same darn thing, yeah. and I don't like it because it doesn't jerk me off the same way the book does, and that's it. Like, for all <laughs> intents and purposes, 
<laughs> it doesn't jerk me off in the right way. Yeah, it was, it was a little bit sandier than the. I didn't like this book. horror. So I'm gonna go. <laughs> yeah, yeah that that is a very um, unique problem there. Well, actually. It's, it's you know it's a bias coming into play there, right? It's just like ah, I don't like this jerk off as much as the last jerk off, and so <laughs> even though the same premise exists between the two, okay, it's a, basically a big nostalgia dive. I don't know if you guys have read the book. Oh, you have. I have not. No, you've read it. Um, Will Wheaton. Will Wheaton, yeah. yeah. So the audiobook version is oh, read yeah. by Will Wheaton. Uh, Will Wheaton. I don't have a problem with Will Wheaton reading the book. Oh, really? Are we really going to do Little Baby Crusher? I am uh, not a big fan of, uh, <laughs> our, of Will that, Wheaton. That, again, this uh, is a completely different rant, and it's no longer a book rant, really. It comes into an actor rant and a I nostalgia like rant. I Will Wheaton. <laughs> I love yeah, him. Yeah, I don't have a problem with Will Wheaton. We, we play a lot of board games, and he has a board game, uh, board game uh, uh, show on YouTube. Yeah, Does I, he? I like I'm going to have to go watch yeah. that. Um, I forgot the name of it off the top of my head. Oh, it's okay. I'll just type Will Wheaton into YouTube. It'll pop uh, up. But it's great. I mean, it's uh, I like it. <laughs> like it well enough. But, I mean, yeah, that was basically it. And so I noticed that just right then and there, there was some bias coming into play. Uh, all bias, right? There was no real reason from that perspective why I didn't like, ah, it's just a money grab. They're just trying to get, well, yeah, that's well, kind of what Ready Player One was about. Do you ever find yourself, if you've read the book and you're watching the movie and then you expect this, the you, you expect this big turning point to come, you expect the, the, the this, this uh, realization to show up, right? And so you look at your, at your friend that you're with, like, oh, wait, wait, wait for this. And because you didn't oh, see the movie, man. they changed that scene. Yeah. <laughs> and that big reveal is no longer there. Yeah. That happened several times with Harry Potter, actually. Oh. I, I, you know, you, know, you walk in and you're like it's gonna happen it's gonna happen and it never happens and then you leave feeling a tiny bit sad inside again moment of silence for peeves <laughs> i know <laughs> yeah i mean there are a peeves few. was a multiple moment of silence like many <laughs> many many times you were like he made the scene and they cut the scene yeah why because peeves is more popular than harry potter <laughs> there you go um there's very few times where i'm so disappointed that they didn't add a scene where I can't like the movie. A lot of times I'll, I'll like the movie, uh, just fine. There's only one movie and book that I have strong feelings about in regards to adaptations, and that's Ella Enchanted. Oh, yes. So you've read it? Yes. Okay. So Ella Enchanted is not a very action packed book. Like it's, uh, a take on Are Cinderella. Sure? I mean, well, it I'm sounds done. like. Yeah. <laughs> oh I mean, my yeah. goodness. They're basically the new G.I. Joe right there. Exactly, right? There's um, no explosions. It, you know, I'm not going to be there. <laughs> okay. I, I mean, the, it's not an action packed book, but it's, it's one of, I would consider it a heartwarming book. I, you know, it's, it's a cup of tea book for me it's like you know it it's nice and it's sweet and it makes you feel warm and cuddly inside see i love the book because it's very much about the power of your own will uh cinderella is put under a curse where she has to listen to she has to um, obey yeah obey orders so anyone who gives her an order she has to obey them um, she can't go back on this. Like even when she tries to not obey, her body will still go through it. She'll start getting sick. Although, yeah, all I mean, she things. tries to delay it as long as she can. Yeah. So it's it's very much huh. an internal book. It's not a lot of action outside. Ella Enchanted the movie was only the same as the book for the first ten seconds of the movie. Then everything. Yeah. Right after the title to- opened, it was done. It was gone. Right. And then all of a sudden, like she's doing protests for trolls out in front of the castle where that was yeah, never a plot she point. She was not a, an adult in the book. She was a teenager. Yeah. She was an early teenager. She was only yeah. like 13. Yeah. I mean, she was a young girl. She, she like literally kind of grew up as you're reading the novel. Yeah. And what pisses me off most is that I love Anne Hathaway as an actor. I love her work. However, they gave her this crap role <laughs> in this movie that wasn't, it just wasn't good. Like, they even changed where um, Ella and Char were friends in the book. And then all of a sudden, she hates him for not really any reason in the movie. Yeah. And they have that hate growing to the love thing when in the book, they were very mm, fond yeah. of each other throughout the whole thing. Whoops. <laughs> Yeah, I, that was just not very good. Another, uh, there's actually been a mini series of this novel and um, a movie, Frank Herbert's Dune. You go from a highly immersive, incredibly detailed world to something that just kind of falls flat. In I, both the movie and the mini series, it just kind of falls flat. 
Yeah, I think they're actually making a new movie or show. I hope so. I um, really I, hope they do better. I saw on Twitter that um, Brian Herbert, that's... The, yeah, that's yeah, his that's son. Frank's he actually Herbert took son. over writing yeah. for um, him. He was saying that he was working on the uh, manuscript for uh, the screenplay. I hope it's good. I mean, I like Brian Herbert as a writer, but again, he he's not Frank. <laughs> Uh, it, I think it's just hard to live up to. I think. Yeah. I mean, he does well. I, here's the thing. He does well on his own as, as an author on his own for himself. He does great, but trying to fill those shoes. Well, I think he probably could have wrote the next bestseller, but since it's compared to such a classic, no yeah. matter what he was kind of, yeah, it's, he's going to be compared. No matter. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining me for the first episode of The Return Cart. Uh, we'll end this with what you're currently reading, what you think about it. And uh, if you'll go first. Mark. Oh, sure. I'm, I'm actually reading The Stand. And uh, it's great. Yeah, I don't have a problem with it. No problem with it? You're listening to it in audiobook format? Yes, I am. Very cool. Excellent. Um, I'm currently reading uh, Zombies and Calculus. Um. Zombies and calculus. Zombies and calculus. Very riveting. Is that really a thing? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. It's about a a, a, a calculus teacher who's uh, using math to uh, uh, survive the zombie apocalypse. It's actually pretty good. Wow. Yeah. Is that through your audiobook or? Uh, that would be very difficult through audiobook. <laughs> I think I actually think there is an audiobook too. That's the funny part. <laughs> but I also think that the author was saying that was a bad idea. <laughs> I was about to say because of like all that math yeah, yeah. explained to you like that's the physics <laughs> lesson right there right so the calculus like a, lesson yeah, it's like a programming book right yeah. you imagine <laughs> like a programming book in audiobook format like yeah, how well, the hell what's, what's great about it is you know I mean he, he he sits there and you know he realizes that you know these, these zombies are, are you know they're starting to spread fast so he sits there with with a couple of students uh, uh, another teacher um and one other person, I can't remember her name, but but these people are sitting in a room and he's calculating how uh, like what their odds of uh, of uh, of escaping is uh, by being able to determine how fast, you know, the zombies can move and react to objects and also uh, calculating uh, uh, this the rate that the uh, the zombies would spread, that the virus would spread. And uh, it's actually pretty interesting. Uh I gotta say, I liked it. <laughs> awesome. I'm gonna have to check that out. Yeah, that, that does sound pretty good. Uh, I'm actually currently reading, uh, Wolf Hall. I have that. You'll have to tell me how that is. Uh, it's really good. Uh, uh, Wolf Hall is basically what I would consider a historical fiction. So it has some historically accurate information with a fictional twist to the character's, um, personal life during these events. Um, it's mainly about Thomas Cromwell. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. The first, and that is your protagonist throughout the entire, uh, series is really Thomas Cromwell touching on the lives of King Henry, uh, the eighth and his divorce from his wife, Catherine of Aragon. Um, sounds a lot more dry and boring than it really is, but, uh, it's a pretty good read. Cool. There you go. I'm juggling four different books right now. On audiobook, I have The Girl on the Train. I just started that while I was working out two days ago. And I still have 10 more hours to go. Wow. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Yeah, I think um, I have like 30 some left in the stand. Oh. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really a big audiobook, but I'm trying to, uh, add it to my repertoire of reading. Um, I'm also reading Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan. Uh, cause the movie came out and I really want to see it. <laughs> I'm either not going to see the movie or I'm not going to read the book. I can't tell you which. I'm, I'm probably not going to do either. I'm not honest. I, I have to say, I'm not quite sure. I'm kind of on the fence about that one, but it's, it's, it's pretty good so far. I like it. Um, we'll see how it goes. I'm only in the first like 50 pages. So I like it so far. And then there is, um, dark places by Gillian Flynn which is about this girl who survives her brother killing their mother and two siblings. And then kind of what happens on the aftermath, like right now she uh, is running out of her inheritance money that was gained from people donating to her because they felt sorry for her for what happened with her family. And now she's trying to figure out a way to get more money without having to, you know, get a job. <laughs> 
<laughs> so that's like the first couple of pages in that. And then, uh, the, the ne- last book I'm reading is actually a middle school grade book called Warriors. And it's about cats who live in a clan. Uh, pretty much about cat gangs and <laughs> wow. they're fighting for territories. It's the second book in the series. I actually just finished the first one. And as an adult, eh, it's a quick read. It's not. It's it's okay. It's interesting. Yeah. It's, it's I, entertainment, right? I would have loved it as a kid. I keep thinking my 10-year-old self would have bought all the books and would have spent a whole weekend just doing nothing but reading them. <laughs> you know what? It just it just occurred to me that we spent all that time talking about uh, movie adapt, uh, adaptations of, of books, and I didn't cover Goosebumps. Oh! I didn't talk about Goosebumps <laughs> even a little bit. That's ah, going to oh. go with me to my grave. <laughs> Well, one day we'll have to bring up Goosebumps on its own personal podcast. It's going to break your spine. So many. Uh, 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 crack my spine? Uh, crack your spine, yeah. There you That's the name of the segment, uh, yeah. Uh, what really cracks my spine is we didn't talk about Goosebumps. Uh, what really <laughs> cracks my spine. Uh, we'll have to have my, our own segment about past Oh, yeah. Past uh, we books. should probably have an entire segment talking about, like, books that we loved when we were younger. You because know, I read books. Goosebumps. I did um, the Brian Jacques yep. uh um, Redwall series. Redwall. Um, Animorphs was big. I loved Animorphs. I bought an Animorphs book, never read it. I just See, so like, I couldn't well, get you past guys were the first reading, page. Yeah, just, well, well, you guys were doing Animorphs. I was literally reading uh, Frank Herbert and Roger uh, Zelzini. So what you're saying is you're elitist and you're, you're better than <laughs> you're better than our <laughs> entry level plebeian. No, I'm, I'm just saying that um, I blew through those books so quickly that Nana would, who is our grandmother, would never buy me more than five in a month. Oh, and I blew through them too much that eventually she. She's like, okay, on to something bigger. And she's like, there you go. Read See, this. What she's just like grabbing stuff with the lot, highest number of page count. Exactly. That's what Nana did. Fantasy novel reader. So That's you know why. the uh, Scholastic Book Fairs? Yeah. My mom would limit me to about four books that I could get from the Scholastics. Yeah. My mom and would then too. After that, she would just drop me off at the library, leave me there for four hours <laughs> so that I can pick out the books that I want. And then I would bring home like 20-something books and read that way. But anim- Animorphs was just one of the first sci-fi series that I read, which really drew me in and that I was waiting for the next series. So it was the one that I actually followed where I was waiting for the new book to come out. And Damn I read you, Nickelodeon, all of for like making you interested in reading through watching their TV shows and putting out their own serialized. Well, that goes back over to Reading Rainbow, too. Yes, like, Reading oh, yeah. Rainbow was so bad. Oh, dang you. It was great. Yes, it was. Um, oh, but uh, that actually kind of pushes us forward a little bit there. Um, you're doing an author interview, right? I am doing an author interview. It's scheduled for in about a week, two weeks. In two weeks, I'll be doing the author interview. It's um, Laura, uh, Lauren C. Tfo and her book Implanted, which is um, her latest book that came out. And it is fabulous. And I'm going to force everyone to read it because it's great. Sounds good. Awesome. Sounds like that's going to be a next conversational topic. Yes, it is. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us in the return cart, and hopefully we'll see you next time. Bye. 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 See ya. Mango. 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 Mango.